Good morning, and welcome to the CCTT online training demo. My name is Mike Panaki, and every week we do one of these little demonstrations just to go through and show you kind of how the online class works. So in previous sessions, we've gone through in detail how you register, how you get in, get all set up. So we're not gonna go through any of that today. Today, we're gonna to go through one of the most important pieces when we go in and do tier one testing. And that is our optical loss test set testing, our OLTS uh, test set. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at our optical loss, we're gonna take a look at our length. When we do that, we need to make sure that we go in and set reference properly. So we're gonna look at the primary method for setting reference today, and that is a one jumper method. And it's really important that we use the one jumper method. And if you attend the class, we'll go into great detail about how any other method will reference out some of the connectors. And by referencing out some of the connectors, we're gonna get optimistic test results. Our test results are gonna look a lot better than they really are because we're not testing one of the connectors. We're not taking that into account. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and get rolling with how we set up a one jumper reference. So we're gonna switch over here to our testers. And so what I've got is I've got my Versive mainframe right here and I've got my remote. Now very importantly, I've had the remote and the mainframe turned on for about 15 minutes now. Now we say at least five minutes, but a lot of this is going to depend on how long this unit has been sitting out in your truck, what the temperature difference is between where you're at and where the testers are. But whenever we go in and we do optical testing, we want to make sure that we have these up to temperature. And what we find is that as we go through, whoops, wrong screen there. <laughs> There's me back. So what we find is that as these units warm up, after you've turned them on, the light will come up on there, the, 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 uh, the strength of the light uh, coming out of that unit will increase. And so if you set reference too soon, what's gonna happen is uh, you're going to set it at a light level that doesn't represent the brightest that that light and the most power that light's gonna be putting out. And in that case, we're not gonna get a good reference and you're gonna get uh, again, optimistic results. So what we wanna do is we wanna go in, make sure that the light source is stabilized. Now, if you've just joined on, uh, what I'm gonna do is in the chat window, I'm gonna put in a URL, a user ID and a password where you can connect into one of the verses, uh, versives I have here. And after I go in and set up the one jumper reference, what you can do is there are, there are some tests that are saved on the USB drive and we're gonna load those up so that you can see the same thing. So let me go in, I'm gonna put the URL in there. So I've put in the URL the user ID and the password. So you can go ahead and connect in if you want. You can connect into any one of the versives I have uh, that show up there on that list. And you can uh, click around if you want. But we're gonna go ahead and set up a one jumper reference so that you can just go through and see how that's done. And uh, we'll go through there, okay? So with that said, let's come over here and we will switch back to the units. and. Before we do anything, as far as setting reference goes, what we're gonna do is we are going to get out our inspection camera. We're gonna get out our inspection camera and we're gonna make sure that we've got the right tip on there. Why? Because we need to inspect and clean our fibers before we connect them up. This is to ensure that we get the best measurements and to protect all of our equipment from damage by putting dirty fibers on there. So I've grabbed my tip right here um, actually, that's the wrong tip for the fiber I'm using. I'm using SC connectors. So I'm going to grab my 2.5 millimeter tip. And just as a reminder, I just like to go through this every time we do these. Uh, when I come in here and put the tip on the scope, 
I'm just going to barely tighten that up, right? Just like that. I'm not gonna put a pair of channel locks on there and try and clamp that down or anything. It does not need to be that tight. And all that will do is damage the equipment. And we, we don't wanna do that. So we're gonna get our inspection scope set up right there. So we've got that. And I'll tell you what, let me switch over to the desk times like that. But right now it says set reference down at the bottom. Now we should give this module a little bit of time to warm up there because well, uh, I just plugged it in, but here's the thing, we're not gonna wait too long because we have a webcast to do. And the temperature in here is pretty consistent. This has been sitting in here, I'm not bringing it in from one location to another. And we'll give it a minute to uh, test, clean our fibers and set everything else up. All right, that being said, I'm gonna come in and click on set reference. So when I set reference, when should I set my reference? That's that would be a good question right there. So when I should set my reference is every time I begin a testing cycle, I'm going through and I'm doing testing, uh, any time I disconnect the output fiber. So on the modules, we have a light source, we have a light meter. If we ever go in and disconnect the fiber from the light source, we need to reset reference because now that mated connection right there, we've unconnected it and we need to go back in and reset reference. So if we ever disconnect that fiber or we power the units off or we're starting a new test cycle, good time to go in and reset reference. All right, so let's take a look at how we do that. So what we're gonna do is on our screen right here, what we see is we've got this little wizard. So when I clicked on uh, set reference, uh, it came up and said, hey, uh, what a one jumper reference is performed by connecting one TRC to the output of each input. So we're going to say, let's go and run the wizard on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect those fibers to the output of the remote and the main. Okay. So we'll come in here and we will get out our test reference cords. And in this case, what I'm doing is I have got my encircled flux compliant Fluke Networks test reference cord. So it's got this little puck right here. That puts a little bend in the fiber. It helps ensure that we get uh, consistent results. So I'm gonna take, and I need to inspect the end of this before I connect it to the output of my remote right there. So this is where that our little button comes in and I push that button, watch the screen down there. I push the button and it takes me to my fiber inspection screen. So we'll come in and we'll put on the old glasses there and we'll come over here. We're gonna take a look at that fiber and oh my gosh, what the heck. So if we come back here, we take a look at what's going on with the end face on that fiber. I just pulled the dust cap off. Look at that. I, I could not make that up. That is uh, a chunk of something right there on the end of that fiber. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and we are going to get out our fiber cleaning pen. Now, that thing that's on there certainly looks like something that's dry. If it was grease, fingerprint, in that case, I'd wanna come in and use a wet clean. In this case, I'm gonna give it a couple clicks with the old quick cleaner there. We're going to put the camera back on, and that looks a little bit better if we switch back. Let's see if we can get that even better. So I'm going to uh, give it another clean there. Yep, I'm just kind of moving that dirt around. So honestly, I'm going to try a different pen for cleaning, and the reason I'm going to try a different pen is because sometimes these pens get contaminated. And once they get contaminated, we can spend a lot of time trying to clean and not have any success. So we're gonna to switch to a different fiber cleaning pen here. See how that looks. Yeah, see that looks a lot better. I need to throw that other pen out. All right, so that is clean. 
So we've got that end face clean. So what I'm gonna do is before I do anything else, I'm gonna take that end face over here. I'm gonna bring it over here. I'm gonna plug it into the output of my remote. We're gonna set our fiber right there. Okay, and following our diagram, we're gonna come over here, we're gonna grab our other TRC, uh, encircled flux compliant TRC. Take a look at that end face. And that end face looks really good. And I hard to see it with the glare there, but we've got a good end face there. So I'm gonna plug that into the output of my main. Now, ideally what I wanna do is I wanna lay these fibers out, especially when it comes to single mode. Uh, I wanna try and get as much of the coil out of them as possible. I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to inspect the end face on the remote side coming over. We're gonna plug that in and we're going to inspect the cable coming from the output of the main to the remote. Take a quick look at that. That looks good. We're gonna pop the cover off of there. And put that on. Now, we hear a little tone. Oh, that's good. We like to hear that tone. So now let's go back to our desktop here. And we are going to go back from the fiber inspector and it takes us right back into our set reference. So now I hit next. So now I've connected them up. So I can come in here and I can say set reference. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna measure the optical signal strength from each of the main and the remote. And if I say view reference, I see that right here, uh, it gives me these numbers. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for numbers between 23 and a half and uh, negative 23 and a half and negative 25 decibel meters. And that's the optical signal strength. And I'm pretty close right there on this one. And I look good on this one, but I am within the ranges. So we'll go ahead and we will continue on. So now I'm going to hit next. It says disconnect those fibers. Now here's the thing. I always like to make sure that when I disconnect those fibers, I have a place to put those fibers. So that's why one of the things I'll do here is I'll go ahead and grab a bulkhead connector. So I've got that bulkhead connector there. So I'm gonna take the input fibers. We do, at this point, we do not disconnect the output fibers. I'm gonna take the input fiber coming from the remote. I'm gonna put it on this side. I'm gonna take the input fiber coming from the main. I'm gonna put it on this side, okay? So now, if we go back and we take a look at our wizard here, our wizard says that the next step is to come in and connect up our second TRC to each of the inputs, and then we're gonna connect all that together. Cool, so let's do that. So we're, we will switch over here. So I'm gonna grab this cable right here and we're going to click on our secret little button down there on the bottom of the camera. Brings up our fiber inspection scope. So I'm gonna take a look at that end face right there. I think I could do a little bit better than that. All right, that looks really good. So I'm gonna take that from the output. This is gonna be the output of the remote. I'm gonna put that here so the red always goes toward the light source. We're going to inspect this end face real quick. Give that just a little clean there. Always wanna make sure all of our end faces are clean. Holy moly, you can see that on the camera. We picked up something there. Let's try that again. This is why we inspect and then clean. There we go, nice and clean. We're gonna put that into the input of the main. We're gonna grab our other test reference cord here. And we will grab the hot end of this. 
our red end. We'll inspect that. That looks good. So we're going to plug that into the output of the main. We're finally going to come over here and we are going to take our last connector, give that a quick inspection. See if we can get that a little bit cleaner there. That looks beautiful right there. So now I'm going to plug that in to the input of my remote and we get that happy tone right there, right? We get that tone that lets us know that we're connected up. So now we'll come back here. I'm going to go back and now we do our TRC verification. So our TRC verification ensures that our test, well, it ensures our test reference cords aren't bad and it ensures we have a good connection. Now, the value that we're looking for right here is less than uh, point or less than or equal to 0.15 dB. So in this case, I've got a loss of 0.02 and a loss of 0.06. That is beautiful. I love that. That's exactly the type of value I want to see in there. That tells me everything's clean, that my test reference cords aren't bad, that I am now ready to go in and start doing my testing. So in this case, using the law, so let me just show you, if I hit next on here, it says, okay, let's unhook that and we're ready to go and start doing our testing. Okay, so now we can put the link that we want to test in there and we're all set. So I can go back to the home screen and I'm gonna to go to my results. And what I see in my results is right here, I have these TRC values in here. And these TRC values, uh, we see 2019, 718. If I click on that, it shows me my test reference value for that test reference cord that I tested. So here's the thing. If somebody does not go in and set reference properly, those test reference values are going to be wrong in there. They're gonna be above 0.15 for multi-mode and above 0.25 for single mode. If I'm going back and reviewing results and I look at those test reference values and I see that either the TRC values have been deleted or I see that the TRC values are out of range, then we need to back up and say, you know what, I don't know if I can really test any, I can validate any of these test results, if any of these are good. So what I'd like you to do on your Versive, and in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this Versive, we'll move that out of the way, and let's see if we can bring up a web panel here. We're gonna bring up our web browser, and I'm going to go out to uh, old guacamole here, and I'm gonna log in as CCTT1. So in the chat window, there was some login information for you there. So this is where when you take the online class, you log in and you're assigned a versive. So when you log in as part of the class, that versive pops right up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and I can see which versives are in use. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab versive 70. So if you're using one of these versives in this webcast right now, what we can do is if we go out to results, and we go to transfer, and we go to USB flash drive. What this does is each one of these versives that we use in class has a USB flash drive attached to it. So I'm gonna say import, and I am going to import my tier one class results. So if I select that and I hit import, what this allows me to do is import those test results off of that USB drive. And these were test results that I collected in preparation for one of our online classes. So now if I back, back out and I go to results and I say view all, and I look at my tier one class results, we see that right here, here are things like our TRC right there. And I've got encircled flux TRC one, and that failed. So if I click on that, well, in this case, 
this is where I saved my fiber inspector results. So if I look at that, here's a TRC where I ran the fiber inspection test and it failed. Now we'd wanna clean that before we connected it to anything. But what we'll notice is down here, there's that TRC result, shows us the date and time. And if I click on that, we see that that came back at 0.03 dB. So if I am reviewing my tier one OLTS loss and length test results, I can come back in here and I can take a look at what those TRC values were at the time somebody set reference. So in, in summary, what we find is that one, one jumper reference is that jumper reference, that reference method that is preferred by manufacturers and for warranty. And what it does is it ensures that we are measuring the connectors at both ends of that link. If we use a two jumper reference or we use a three jumper reference, we will reference out one or both of the connectors at each end. So that means that we're not taking that connector value into consideration and it's gonna give us optimistic test results and we may pass links that should not have passed. And it can potentially give us inconsistent test results and possibly give us negative test results, which would show us that we're getting more light back than we put in. And that's not good. So if we want consistent test results, we want test results that are going to be accepted by manufacturers and for warranty purposes, we need to be using one jumper reference. And this is how we do that one jumper reference. So we do these sessions every week, now pretty much every week, to go through you know, our online training. We offer the CCTT training right there uh, online. If you go out to our, the website, cctttraining.com, three T's in the middle, then you can go out and see when we're running those classes. And what happens? Well, we will send you the books that are used as part of the class. Uh, we send you this nifty little pen. And I got to show you, if you haven't been in here before and taken a look at this, one of the things I like about this pen is it's got this little stylus on the end. So I can come in here and I can use that to drive my tester using the stylus. Helps keep the cl screen clean. If I have gloves on, I can still use this quite easily. Also, you get one of these little certified test technician stickers with the year you were certified. And so you can take that sticker and put that sticker on your hard hat. So then that way you can, did I get the right side? You can show everyone that you're CCTT certified. In fact, what I should do is put the 2018 sticker on the other side. So that is, let's get that set up there, right? That is what we do. We do training on the Fluke Networks Versive line of equipment, on the copper equipment, on the fiber equipment, on the CertiFiber Pro, on the OptiFiber Pro. We go through this type of information in detail. Uh, you take a test at the end and it gives you a way to show that you know how to use this and that benefits you it benefits your employer it benefits the customer because they know that you are testing this you're testing the, the network you installed for them properly so uh, if you have any questions I've got the chat window open uh, we have you know just a half an hour in these so going through something like one jumper reference eh, that's about what we have time to do but if you come to the class great opportunity to go in there. So uh, we've got one coming up here. We've got a couple classes coming up here in August. Uh, if you'd like to sign up for those, we'd love to see you there. And uh, if not, we offer them throughout the year. So I will keep those analyzers up and running for a while. If you didn't get a chance to log in during this class, uh, feel free to go in, connect up in there, click around. Uh, that's one of the advantages of this online class is that we have a tester for each person that attends the class to use as part of the class. So we have a number of hands-on exercises you do. It's important that you go through that. Now, the challenge is for something like setting reference, that's something you need to do. And even if you're not taking the class from us, if you're using this equipment to go out and test fiber networks, please take the time to sit down and go through this process and become comfortable with it. This is the thing you're gonna to have to do every time before your testing cycle. You need to set reference. 
you need to make sure that that's a good reference. So again, we're looking for a value of less than 0.15 dB for multi-mode and 0.25 for single mode to ensure that we set that reference properly. And we need to make sure that those TRC values are in those test results. So anybody going back and reviewing them knows that you set reference properly.